And so a great big welcome to you on this, the second Sunday of Advent, as we continue our journey through this Advent season to the birth of that Christ child. We're glad you're with us this day. I know some of you are at home. I suspect in your bathrobe, sip in your coffee, and somewhere in the church. But wherever we are, wherever you are, wherever we are, we are God's church. And just a reminder, if you get a chance to uh, uh, to come back to the church, uh, if you're feeling up to it, we would love to have you. We've got uh, lots of uh, seats saved for you. Um, and just know that you're missed. A little about the service today. It's our dear friend John the Baptist, a baptizer, and he's out uh, preparing the way of the Lord. And he reminds us of the preparations that uh, that each of us make. Uh, yes, I know for Christmas, uh, my wife's baking cookies right now and uh, and uh, getting some presents wrapped, and we're listening to Christmas music day and night. <laughs> but that's our house, and uh, but that's uh, what we do to prepare. But more than that, for each of us, there's a preparation that takes place that goes deep within our hearts and our lives. And so I hope the message today, I hope the music, the the, the scriptures, the words. Uh, are helpful in your journeys this Advent season as you and I as together we spend this time to prepare for the coming of the Lord. So with that said, let me begin the service now, the brief with the in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let me continue with the prayer of the day. And so, Lord God, stir up your power to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. As we prepare to light two candles of the Advent wreath, we recall the Bible passage where John the Baptizer calls people to repent to clear the decks, to prepare the way of the Lord. And the prophet Isaiah reminds us that the Lord gives us his assurance that he gently welcomes those who repent. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God, who gives us courage to start again. You baptize with the Holy Spirit's fire. Bless us as we mirror your mighty fire in these simple flames and teach us to mirror your justice in the paths we prepare. And we ask that peace abound over all the earth. Amen. Our Gospel lesson for this second Sunday of Advent is from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with verse 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so, let us pray. Let me thank you again as we gather as your people. Yes, some in the respective homes and some in the church. Oh, Lord, whoever we are, we are your church, your people. And so, Lord, come. Come now and fill the hearts and lives of your people as we continue to prepare our lives for your coming. I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleased in your sight. In this I pray. Amen. You may have seen one of the Peanuts cartoon strips where good old Charlie Brownie turns and says to Linus, Life is just too much for me. I've been confused from the day I was born. I think the old troubles that were thrown into life way too fast were not really prepared. And Linus asks, Well, what do you want? A chance to warm up first? <laughs> 
I guess you could say the Advent season is supposed to be our chance to warm up. It's a time to prepare our hearts and our homes for the birth of the Christ child. It's a time when we put all the decorations in their place. The presents are bought and wrapped, cards are sent on received, and we get ready for that special Christmas day. But if we aren't careful, the time of prep will be over in a big day. We'll be here and it will be just another day. We'll finish opening all the gifts. The room will be strewn with scraps of wrapping paper and ribbon. Turkey or ham will be nothing but leftovers. We'll be parked in front of the TV watching one of those wonderful games. Then all of a sudden that empty feeling, uh, it'll hit us. That feeling of, what's the use? That Charlie Brown feeling of, there's just something missing as if we're thrown into the Christmas way too fast. I think that's when we'll realize that we needed time to warm up. In part, that's the cry we hear from the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, that voice of John the Baptist, as he echoes the words of the prophet Isaiah. that says, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. We know that John the Baptist came during the time of Christ. He appeared in the wilderness and called people to a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He came and called the people to a time of preparation. And through his words, we too are called once again to prepare for the birth of the Christ child. We come to worship and to all the activities, knowing that we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. John's words have echoed in our ears all year long. And so, and so we seek to prepare. We know this time is God's time. And this moment is God's moment. All of creation groans in expectation of what is about to unfold and what is yet to be. So let me ask, how do we prepare? How do we make our hearts and our lives ready? I believe one way is through our worship. Through our worship experiences, we tune our hearts and souls to listen to that still, quiet voice of God and to hear God's message and to see God's presence in our lives and in the life of the world around us. We turn our hearts and our souls to the movement of God's Holy Spirit so we can once again experience the coming of God into the world through the birth of His very Son. I believe another way we, we prepare is that through prayer. The Apostle Paul tells us, he says, pray without ceasing. And that means our spirit should never be far from God's Spirit. Prayer should be such a natural part of our spiritual lives that we're always prepared for the coming of our Lord, whether during Advent or the Second Coming. Because Christ is never very far away. I love the story. It's about a businessman who, though he had an elevator straight to his office, does not use it. He prefers the stairs. And he calls them his prayer stairs. When he walks up those stairs in the morning, he takes each step separately and liberally, praying for God to guide and direct him every step he takes that day. And in the evening, he walks down those same steps, thanking God for the help that God has given him that day. I have a hunch that this businessman, he's ready for Christmas. Isn't that what we're preparing for? To prepare for Christ's birth within our hearts, our minds, and our spirits? And if we are prepared, I have, then I have no doubt that Christ will be born anew in us this very Christmas. And yes, I know there's lots of obstacles in our relationship with God. But the biggest hurdle to our preparation, I think, is our own brokenness, our own sinfulness our wanting to go our own way, our wanting to do our own thing, my way. And because we're fallen people, alienated and separated from God, life often takes on the appearance of, of John's wilderness. At times, it really does feel like the wilderness out there, even when we're surrounded by friends and family. Our brokenness, our sinfulness, gets in the way of our preparation. I believe it's the greatest threat to our being ready for the birth of Christ. Families will be painfully splintered this Christmas season because of one partner's unfaithfulness to the marriage covenant. Lives will be senseless, senselessly lost on the highways because some people confuse drunken revelry with real joy. There'll be people who will feel only coldness and cynicism this Christmas because they've wandered so far from God that they can hardly feel anything whatsoever. And we laugh about it to do our own thing, going our own way which is another way of defining sin. But think about it for a minute. Think about living in a truly self-indulgent, self-centered society. A society where husbands and wives can't count on each other for their love and their faithfulness, where children can't count on secure homes or parents to nurture them, 
for people who live only for pleasure and never accept responsibility for themselves or for each other. Not very many who would want to live there. I know I wouldn't. I certainly would not want that for my son, John, or my wife, Johnny. Sure, we can blame some of our unpreparedness on, on the corporate nature of our sin, yes. But sometimes we just willfully disobey, don't we? We don't, we know exactly what we're doing. And you know what? We do it anyway, don't we? Today, we get ourselves in trouble by avoiding warning signs and positioning ourselves in situations where the danger of falling flat on our face is imminent. And then we act surprised, surprised when temptation swallows us whole. And as most of us know, it can swallow us whole, yes. But the good news is that the manger is empty, folks, and that changes everything. While we prepare for the celebration of the birth of the Christ, we do so with the knowledge that the manger is empty because Christ has been born into the world. Christ has grown to be a man and fulfilled his purpose. Christ has come to redeem the broken and the sinful, to bring home the lost. And that's the whole purpose of Christ's birth in the first place. This infant, this infant whom we worship is the Savior who puts it all back into perspective. He tells us all about ourselves, our past, our failures, our shortcomings, our brokenness, our disobedience. And can you believe it? He loves us anyway. The good news is that Christmas goes way beyond the miraculous birth of a child who was laid in a stable. It has to go beyond that, because an infant stuck in a manger can't do much. If our faith, if our story, if our history doesn't go beyond the stable to that cross, into that empty tomb, then the birth is meaningless. And the story of Jesus is just another cute baby story with a twist for the inside edition to pick up on. But the good news is that the manger is empty, folks. While we stand before that manger, warts and all, the risen Son of God reaches out with compassion. He looks us square in the eye, and he says, I love you. I know all you did, and all that you failed to do, and still I love you you. Because I love you, I want to show you, to personally guide you to a better, more excellent way of life. I want to lead you out of the wilderness and into the promised land. And that's the good news, folks. That's the message of Advent and Christmas, that the manger is empty because God hasn't forgotten his people. Sometimes a sinful, uncertain, and fragile world does seem like a wilderness. But there's one thing we can be certain of. God, God is still in charge, folks. And God is nearer than any of us can imagine. Wherever we go, whatever we do, God is right there with us. He truly is with us. He truly is our Emmanuel. For God's love remains forever and forever true. And so the voice of John the Baptist cries, says, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. For God has been at work for thousands of years, bringing about just the right condition for the birth of that Christ child into your life and into mine. The God of the Bethlehem star, the God of the angels singing the peace on earth, the God of the humble shepherds, that same God, that same God is still in control. And the babe in the manger is God's great announcement that he is at work reconciling the world unto himself. The manger is empty because Christ needs a place. He needs a heart to be born into this Christmas season. The manger is empty because Christ is alive. And he is here now, asking to be born fresh and new in your life and in mine. All we have to do is put our lives into his hands. Yes, Advent is a time to prepare for the birth of the Christ child. And there's no better time than the present. Let him be born anew in our lives. There's better, no better time than the present. Let him lead you out of the wilderness, out of the wilderness of our fallen humanity and into the promised land of his awesome and loving grace. And so, to you, the people of God, it's my prayer this day that we would truly experience God's awesome and marvelous grace in all its fullness, this holy Advent and Christmas season. For I pray it be so. And all God's people said, Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Lord, I love you above all things. I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, and let me never be separated from you. O Lord, may I live in you, and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And so receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you.